I think he's on there. He signed in for me. Yeah. Yeah. I did a good job of that. <laughs> Ready? Good evening, everyone. Today is Monday. It is September 19th, 2011, and I will call this meeting of the Norfolk City Council to order. This is an open meeting. In the north e northeast corner of this room is the actual Open Meeting Act, made accessible certainly to all members of the public. I would ask you if you would stand with us, join in a moment of silence, and as well the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Beth will continue with roll call. Coy? Here. Miney? Here. Merrill? Here. Boston? Here. Murin? Here. Brenneman? Here. House? Here. Saunders? Here. Under action then, I would ask for um, consideration of approval of the consent agenda that was before you tonight. So I move, Your Honor. Second. Motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. If you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. And as well, I'd ask for approval of the full agenda. So move, Your Honor. Second. Motion with a second to approve the full agenda. Again, if you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Okay, we have a couple items tonight under special presentation. <coughs> we have some guests here tonight that um, we are very happy to ask them to come forward if they would. The American Legion Auxiliary Group. Ladies, if you will introduce yourself and let us know why you're here. My name is Deb Fries, and I'm a member of the American Legion Auxiliary. And my name is Mary Swenson, and I'm an aux auxiliary member also. This year, our group decided that we needed to present some money to a service organization in Norfolk. Uh, therefore, we have a check here, and if, if Chief Miser would come forward here too. We would like to present to Chief Miser and the police department a check for $12,525 for the police dog and five cameras for the policeman. So, Chief Miser, here's your check. Thank you Thank very you so much. much. We, we do understand that the dog is going through his training right now, and um, we are so happy that we are able to present that check to, to um, Chief Meisner because you guys, he protects our, our veterans, and um, we wanted to do something for them because of all the protection that they do for us, and everyone is going to be uh, benefiting from that. So thank you for letting us Very do this nice. tonight. Thank you. Thank Chief. you. And on behalf of the police division, I would just like to thank you for this very generous donation. We will put it to good use. Uh, it's very timely because we are in the process of, of getting and training a new dog. And so this is going to work out very well for us. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, the auxiliary as well as the legion uh, for, for all your support of us. Uh, we very much enjoy working with you in, in our joint projects. And uh, it's, it's a privilege to be able to work with you. So. Thank you very much again. Thank you. On behalf of the entire city of Norfolk, ladies, thank you. It's quite a gift. So I appreciate your coming forward tonight. And again, many thanks. And again, next on the agenda is the Tree Advisory Board to present this evening. Carolyn, please. I'm Carolyn Lingenfeld here with the Tree, Norfolk Tree Advisory Board. And just a little background of this award that we're going to give. The Tree Advisory Board was formed just about two years ago. And members on that board are Corey Schmidt, Jesse White, um, Dick Wozniak, Garrett Fisher, and myself. Past members were Kim Redenz and Micah Grotlucian. Uh, uh, this award, we decided, should be given to a business that helps beautify our city. And in appreciation for that, what they, the main maintenance, and also taking into consideration the 
uh, as we review this award, it's um, given for planting trees, water conservation, which would probably include a water garden. A water garden is an area that holds water off of the uh, pavement that it doesn't go into the river streams and so forth. Also water conservation, the one that we're giving it to has buffalo grass planted in the areas along the curb that uh, are hard to water and so that maintains a better use of our city water. Um, the, um, the company that, or the Women's Health out on 25th Street is the one that's receiving this tonight. Is there someone here to receive that? We had, we had like 12 different um, businesses that we looked at for this. And we were, you know, I look all the time at landscaping. I'm pretty much observant of it. But it took this award for me to finally really look. And I was so pleased at really how many businesses do um, make an effort and really do beautify our our community and I was also asked if this was a contest it wasn't a contest we just decided to do this as an appreciation and showing them that somebody does pay attention to what they're doing so this is your award for you to hang in your offices you. congratulations well, thank you very much. From thank you very your, much. Your, you're welcome thank you. and then this uh, award will be or this plaque will hang at the new city offices someplace and it will uh, show each year as we add to this. Thank so thank you very much. Thank you. I might just add congratulations certainly to the Almonds there and, and truly it is beautified. But I also want to acknowledge the tree board because for just a couple years in action they really have made a difference, I believe, in what they feel um, is quality efforts to helping acknowledge what, what we can do and how we can work together to beautify the city of Norfolk. Truly, it's a piece of economic development each and every time we pass by a business that has made some concentrated effort in trying to present a, a great picture for the city of Norfolk. So thank you. And thanks for being here tonight, too. Okay. Um, looks like the next thing we will have is the recreation update, then. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, Veterans Memorial Park is continuing to move along. We're getting some concrete in the ground on the aquatics piece of it and uh, for the new press box that's going to go up next to it. But tonight I, I kind of wanted to shift focus away from Veterans Memorial a little bit and to Tazuka. And I had Pat Mersney here, our Park and Rec Director, is going to give you an update on the improvements that have been made to Taha over the last several months. Pat? I've just been asked to kind of go over briefly of uh, this is well just to kind of case it we every year I kind of say that we were busier than last year but this year has been kind of extraordinary in the amount of work and projects that have been going on across the city so I've been asked just to talk a little bit about what's been going on out at Tazuka Park uh, so I'm going to touch on uh, just some of the major projects that we've been doing just in this one location um, any of you that have been out there have probably noticed most of this, but I'll give just a little bit of a background. Uh, this year, we replaced uh, about 1,114 feet of old deteriorating asphalt roadway through the main roadway through Tazuka. Everything was concreted out there on all the main thoroughfares except for this one piece. And uh, we've been looking at this for years, and it really was failing this year, so we kind of accelerated it. and got it replaced and it is just like driving on a new freeway out there now uh, that led us we we straightened the road out a little bit uh, and then by doing that it created a little more room next to the new playground we have out there so as part of this project we uh, had some concrete hoard for uh, two handicap uh, parking stalls for our new playground out there which is handicap accessible now we have the parking to go with it 
so we were able to get that project done. Uh, as you first come into the park, you probably notice that the caretaker's house is gone. Uh, that house was getting old. The resident had moved. Uh, the septic system was failing. And uh, we just felt uh, that it was time. It was part of our vision there to improve the entrance to the park and getting that house out of there now that the septic system was failing. We removed that. Uh, we're getting close to moving our shop out of there and relocating that which will open that up for some passive recreation. Uh, just tomorrow, we, we have everything set now. Uh, we're going to pour some uh, concrete columns and footings. And the old uh, concession stand shelter that was out at Memorial Park uh, is being moved. It's in the process of being moved. Once this, these columns cure, we're going to set it right there. We will have a large shelter right at the entrance to the park right next to the pond there. So that's kind of an ongoing project that's going on there. Uh, the campground is probably our biggest and uh, longest running project that we got going on out there. Uh, we've been wanting to do something there pretty much ever since I've been here working for the city. Uh, so we finally got everything in place, the funding in place, and everything going. Uh, we just started from scratch. We went in there. If it was in the campground, it was taken out. We removed the electrical system, the old bathhouse. Uh, we had some trees that were we were getting uh, some old cottonwoods in there that had a lot of dieback in there. We got rid of those. We had a couple that had some dieback that were in the way of the new plan. We removed those. We uh, hauled in as part of the, the memorial project where we removed a lot of dirt and helped remove that. We used a lot of the, the dirt as fill there to get the drainage proper. That was one of the biggest problems we had in there is we just didn't have proper drainage. Now everything's draining towards the pond. A new drainage pipe was put in under the road, so now it should drain a lot better. Uh, we're putting in concrete uh, camper pads. Uh, we put in an electrical system that can handle 20, 30, and 50 amp services, which we couldn't do before. Uh, we kept blowing the whole power system because these new campers come in with more power than we were able to supply. So the bathhouse has been rebuilt. So we have a new ADA accessible bathhouse. The first pad next to it is ADA accessible. It's a little bit larger than the others. Um, we've got the whole south side of the campground done, which is where the camp, uh, the bathhouse is. We've got six pads poured there. We put a lot more room in there. That was one of the other complaints we had. So there's a lot more room to the newer guidelines. So we seeded it, I believe, last week or the week before. Got it uh, landscaped and seeded. Now we just need to finish the north side, get those pads poured, get that seeded, let it come up by the spring, and hopefully we'll have a nice opening in the spring where we'll have all new camper pads, new bathhouse, new road in, new road out. And uh, we think it'll be a, just a really nice improvement to what uh, we've had over the years. Uh, another project out there we had completed was the extension of uh, what we call the, the baseball ball field E. Um, baseball was just exploded in town by a lot of hard work by some private individuals and, and organizations. And uh, one thing, the, the high school got baseball after those were built and they needed a place for their JV team to play and they were playing on a small field. These things were built for, for the youth. So what we did here is to, to accommodate more play and to accommodate the high school baseball program better is, is we extended the fence to a distance that better fit the older kids. And, of course, that meant moving the fence, moving the light poles, moving the scoreboard, adding uh, two more sprinkler zones, uh, a few more light fixtures to handle the, the more square footage. And we got that completed uh, a little bit of interference with the baseball programs, but they pretty much worked around it. We didn't have any games canceled, and now we have a, a, a full-sized uh, ball field out there for the older kids and for the high school program to use. Um, and then the last thing I wanted that we're just in the process of designing and all that, part of Veterans Memorial Park project was some funding to go towards uh, Tazuka Park to enhance the youth ball field complex there. And part of that was was hopefully that we will have the funding available to build two more 
of the youth ball size ball fields, build some t-ball fields where we will move them from where we have them now at Warren Cook Park, get them all in one location, hopefully at some point get some lighting to them, uh, and then build a, a new bathhouse, storage room, and concession stand building out there, something that's, uh, and then getting water and sewer to it, something that we've, we've been wanting for a long time. And that's kind of in the design phase right now, and it kind of is contingent upon funding uh, that's available from the Veterans Memorial and Tazuka Improvement Project. So I would be uh, entertaining any questions if you wish. Otherwise, those are kind of the five major projects. I mean, we've been doing stuff all over town. We've done more stuff out at Tazuka on a much smaller scale as we've done across the city. But uh, I was asked to kind of give you an idea of what we've been doing out there, some of the major things that have been going on. And uh, some of this you can drive right by. Maybe if you're just not paying attention, you don't know what's been happening out there. But we're, we're kind of uh, happy and kind of proud of uh, some of the improvements that, that have been coming along this last year or two. And these are just an example of some of the things that have been getting done. So. Any comments or questions for Pat? I will tell you, Mr. Mercer, you sure have made some campers, please, with well, to see what's going on there. That's been a request for a long time. It has. And it, it's just been a tough, tough road, but we, we finally turn in the corner on that, and hopefully by spring we'll get them in there, and they should be some pretty top-notch facilities. Great. Good. Building well, for the future. Yeah. We always see you busy, so um, appreciate it. Okay. And I'm glad to have you here tonight. And I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say Jim Cook. We certainly have seen a lot of street crew, street work being done out there yeah. as well, too. So. Well, and I, I should have mentioned that. I mean, without the help, we've done a lot of this to to stretch the, the city dollars as we do a lot of this in-house. And if it wasn't for the fine folks from the street division helping us, and you've seen them yep. doing working on the park projects, and, and Scott, the fire folks, their expertise and their hard work with that electrical system as an example out at the campground, uh, we just wouldn't be where we are now. And we're very appreciative of that help. Very good. Thanks Pat, for I, being here. I don't want you to forget the water and sewer guys either. Okay. It, like I said, I don't know that there's a division here that, that really hasn't hasn't helped us. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. I mean, there's just, we, we all help each other you know, is needed. And like I said, they are working on a couple of well projects with us and, and running water lines and, and helping with that. So I just don't want you to you. get, save you some grief tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> you got to leave, leave a little food there. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anything you want to add to that at all? Uh, no, Mayor. I think that uh, sums it up. But uh, Pat uh, and the troops so across the city, obviously, have been yeah. doing a great job. So keep it up. Thanks, Pat. Absolutely. Okay. Then we'll move into a public hearing. Uh, first on the agenda is a public hearing for the mayor and the city council to sit as a board of equalization in order to levy special assessment. So I would ask for a motion to adjourn as the mayor and council and convene then as the board of equalization. So move, Your Honor. Second. second. Motion with a second. If you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Okay. Then I will open the public hearing here and, and look for John Coba maybe to come forward, if you will, John, and give us um, an update as to what's going on here. Thank you, Mayor. The, um, before you, you have uh, four resolutions that relate to mowing charges for uh, four separate properties. One located at 300 South 5th Street, one at 1704 West Paswa, or West Phillip Avenue, one at 1202 West Prospect Avenue, and one at 1003 South 2nd Street. Uh, these properties were subject of a complaint. Uh, the complaint was reviewed, uh, reference overgrown weeds and, and uh, incidental maintenance related to litter removal. Notices were given on these properties, a five-day notice to mow, uh, and uh, uh, when these properties were not mowed within that five-day time frame, an authorization was given for the mowing to be completed and the charges uh, assessed accordingly. Uh, and uh, so that uh, would, uh, would be the issue with those four properties. Okay. Any questions from the council here at all? Or? I'm here to discuss one of those properties. 
That, that's fine. You certainly can do it. Do sign. I need to? He needs to sign in. No, he's fine. Okay. At this point, sir, if we could, we'll ask you to come over to the podium for us, sign in, and state your name. My name is Paul Spots. I'm the owner at 1202 West Prospect. couple of items. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. First of all, there was mowing done there on that lot, but uh, uh, I had been in contact with Mr. Koba and Mr. Nordhues about plans that I had to uh, do uh, some uh, some more demolition on a permit that I had from a few years ago. And that demolition involved taking the surface dirt off about 60% of that lot. Uh, I, I was in constant touch with these fellas, uh, stating that that work was about to start. Uh, I guess that they ordered the this mowing uh, to go ahead. And uh, it turns out that mowing was only necessary on about 40% of the lot. So uh, in order to settle that, I would offer to pay $100 to, for about 40% of that bill on that lot. And what took place, uh, I was never notified that that mowing was gonna take place at the time so I could meet him there. And what happened was that the crew went in and uh, demolished a raspberry patch that I had growing there. And I brought some of the remnants of it. These were raspberries that were bearing fruit and covered an area about 8 by 16 feet. Uh, what I've done since then is I went to Earl May and uh, found out the cost of replacing those raspberries. And at $14.99 per bush, and needing 64 bushes to replace those, including tax, it comes to $1,026.52. So I'd like to submit that bill at this time to the proper authority and request that it be paid and to settle the, the cost of the mowing, much of which was unnecessary, I'd be willing to pay $100 to settle that. So that's all I have. I guess what I'm going to suggest to you, sir, is that maybe this, you know, John, I don't know if you have anything you want to respond to on this. And I can only... Uh I can only respond to the um, timing of this. Uh, the mowing notice that we gave was given out on June 7th. And how do we do that, John? Uh, that was sent out by a certified letter. The certified letter was signed for by Mr. Spots on June 22nd. And when the property was not mowed, we gave an authorization for that mowing to be conducted on June 28th. Uh, this is the first that I've heard about uh, any crop or any valuable items on the lot. Um, I do not recall any time specific for any work that was going to be done at that property uh, that gave us any indication that our 
you know that there was a plan in place uh, that had any definite timelines associated with it so we had a lot that was overgrown and we went ahead and authorized the mowing to be completed okay appreciate I that a, I have a response Yes, the, the work on the lot started about three days after the mowing was done. And I had been in communication, even though, yes, there was a certified mail, but I had sort of requested some time for this work to be done. I was in, always in contact with Mr. Uh, Koba or Mr. Nordhues about this situation. Okay. Is there anyone else here that wants to speak to this as, as we are right now as a Board of Equalization considering the assessing of? Is there someone Come. that I could deliver this bill to? I tell you what, why don't you hand it right over here to our city administrator and, and um, we will have conversation, sir. Did you have 64 raspberry bushes planted there? The Councilman Faust's. Oh, I didn't have them planted there. They were uh, established here when I bought the property. Okay. And so the best way that I could estimate their value is just to come up with a replacement cost. And were they overgrown with weeds? Like no. so that they couldn't see them there? Or? No, they're, these were tall bushes and uh, the remnants of them were there with the fruit still on. I've taken on some raspberry patches in my day and <laughs> they usually win, so I just wondered. So. Since that time, they've been that it's July is not a good time to prune bushes. So since that time, it's been overrun with foxtail and fine. Okay, and at this point, Mr. Spots, answer for me: Are you clearing that lot completely now? Is that what you're telling, or am I misunderstanding when you advised that you were going to be do it yeah will you please so that we all better understand and, and like I say I don't know that we're going to be able to resolve tonight but I think it's good for the council to be able to hear okay my question, question to you was um, if I understood you correctly you were telling mr. Koba or advising us that um, you had been in contact with a project that you were going to be doing on that property and to clearing the lot um, can you help us understand what it is you're doing? I guess I'm... Sure, sure. When I bought the property, there was a red-tagged house on it. I uh, contracted to have the house demolished. Okay. In, uh, I believe it was 2008 or nine. Then, uh, because there were um, retaining walls near the sidewalk that were about to collapse, and because it was hard to maintain with the mowing and everything, I hired... Uh, someone to reshape the front portion of the lot that was difficult to get at and still had some rubble in it from the demolition. So that's been accomplished. Uh, this raspberry patch was in the rear where it was unaffected by the demolition, but it definitely was affected by the mowing. All right. So if anybody cares to see these, I'd... Well, you've helped clarify, I think, what... I was making an assumption, so I appreciate that clarification. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that wants to speak as to this public hearing? I, I guess the question I would have, uh, you know, we're here in the middle of September. Since the mowing, has the property been maintained? Has there been a follow-up, John? We have received no additional complaints at that location, uh, so I don't know that it is overgrown to the point where we would give an additional notice. Uh, I would say that there is a garage on that property that uh, was also subject to uh, an order to be removed. That garage remains on the property at this time, so we basically have an open issue in that regard, but uh, we have not taken action on the removal of the garage at this time. I guess I would pose the question, Mr. Spot, since it's your property, have you mowed it since the city's mowed it? Have you maintained? I mean, just it's just part of being yes, a... Yes, I, I hired a neighbor, and he's uh, mowed it since then. Since now that it's been reshaped, it's much easier to mow. With the issue of the garage, I have an issue there, too. It's an open issue because 
The garage, I think, should be grandfathered in. I've never been given any notice of appeal on that order that it was issued. Uh, and uh, the, the garage and property is inaccessible from the rear along with several properties along that alley, I, I, which makes it difficult to accomplish anything there. People uh, who live along that uh, alley, which includes five, say five to seven property owners, cannot get access to their, to their garages, uh, driveways, and homes because the level of the alley is from three to 15 inches below the level of the um, surrounding lots due to uh, the alley having washed out through the years. Now, when I was preparing to do this demolition, I offered, I, I was never, I never got a return call from the street department, but I talked to Mr. Koba or Mr. Nordhuis about supplying fill dirt because I had excess fill dirt there. I was told that they would not accept that as fill dirt to fill that alley. So up until now, nothing has been done with that alley for all the property owners that are there, and that's the alley. I'll identify it as being... Uh, in the 1200 block of Prospect on the north side uh, and it runs it runs east and west on the north side of the lots that face Prospect um, you know just to sum up I don't really feel like I've been getting responses from the administration as far as uh, improvements that definitely need to be made there by the city uh, to further enable the development of that area, not just my lots, but the area. And that uh, if Investors look at things like that to see if they're going to get cooperation from the city on development. And I'm financially able to develop that lot. But I hesitate because I wonder how responsive the city administration will be to helping with improvements in that area. And I'm not speaking just for myself. I'm speaking of the property owners on the east two-thirds of that alley whose cars can be damaged by trying to enter lots, uh, causing property damage, uh, it's just a nightmare. So I hope that clarifies. I think you've given us some clarification. And I will tell you that certainly um, there will be further conversation that's had. I would like to think, though, that, sir, you know at any time if there is a need for you to call your council or to call a city administrator, believe me. They want to hear what it is that your concerns are in order for us to be able to take care of them timely. So I would just encourage you to do that. But um, well, again, I appreciate I, that this hearing was held. Uh, that gave me the opportunity to notify. You don't need to have a hearing to, to be, you know, to have the year, sir. Feel free at any time. So. Well, I, I felt I, you might be more responsive because I got very little response from the the uh, sections of the city involved in these issues. Well, well, we'll all come together here and we'll work it out. So, um, again, I appreciate your being here. I do think we'll go, we'll, you know, we have it here as uh, certainly a resolution and it's up to the elected officials to make a choice of how we go forward there. So, I appreciate uh, your being here. I have a question. Sure. Mr. Spots, I really wanted to catch you before you left that way, <laughs> but uh, so, uh, Question though, um, you did receive this this notice from the uh, appears it was a certified letter. You received the notice on the certified letter that way uh, that uh, maintenance was supposed to occur was to occur. Yes, and then I uh, had no chance to appeal it. That's my attempt to communicate, and I did communicate that the timeline on the work that was being done there. So technically. 
I suppose the time had passed. However, I was trying to work with the city offices to avoid unnecessary work. And then as it turns out, uh, damage to my property there. Did you document any of your correspondence then with the city or anything along that line? Well, uh, I meant to, if I could, I could document it, I guess, by phone records of calls to the city, the street department, and the offices of Mr. Koba and Mr. Nordhues <coughs> would be the you quickest way I could think of to document. You didn't do anything in writing at the time that you received this to appeal or object to the assessment that the uh, work needed to be taken care of? Well, there was no process for appeal in any of this. I haven't been given a process to appeal. After you received the certified letter, did you contact the city within that time frame or was it after the deadline of the mowing? Do you re recall? I can't recall exactly. I think I, I had, had, it was before and after both and maybe even during that five-day period but if I went to phone records I could probably get I probably have two or three calls to the street department concerning the alley and uh, uh, probably two calls each to Mr. Koba and Mr. Nordhues okay all right thank you Again, my suggestion is going to be that we <clears throat> we will take action when the resolution regarding your property is, comes forward here. But as well, you know, you presented a bill to the city administrator, and I guarantee you there will be conversation about that. We will certainly make sure that you're a part of that. Okay? Okay. Anything else at all, Council? Anything? In? All right. Then uh, what I'd like to do is close this public hearing and ask for a motion to adjourn as the Board of Equalization and reconvene then as Mayor and Council. So moved, Your Honor. Second. A motion with a second, if you will please vote. All Council members voting in the affirmative. Then I would ask for consideration of adoption of resolution number 2011-39, levying a special assessment in the amount of $237 against property located at 300 South 5th Street for mowing and removal of weeds and litter. Your Honor, I would introduce resolution 2011-39. Second. Motion with a second. Any discussion? If not, please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2011-39 is adopted. Next, consideration of adoption of resolution number 2011-40, levying a special assessment in the amount of $312.03 against property located at 1704 West Phillip Avenue for mowing and removal of weeds and litter. So move, Your Honor. Second. Motion with a second. Any discussion? Not please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2011-40 is adopted. Next is consideration of adoption of resolution number 2011-41, levying a special assessment in the amount of $237.99 against property located at 1202 West Prospect Avenue for mowing and removal of weeds and litter. So move, Your Honor. Second. Motion with a second. Any discussion? If I, gu I guess I would offer... Uh, is there any way that we can table this and establish some chronological order as to if Mr. Spots made some attempt to work with staff, if we have a record of a phone conversation they'd had with Mr. Koba or Mr. Uh, Nordhues, that, uh, I mean, uh, we have a citizen here that's extending his olive branch and, or a raspberry branch. And if we can... Uh, work with this individual um, I think it, it's at least should have some discussion so that's that's going to be I guess my my motion is to table this okay let's see we had a motion for adoption of resolution number 2011 um, Councilman McCoy and with a second okay no. we need it we need to vote on that first or no if he wants to table but if it doesn't have a second it dies okay so 
Dale's making it. Councilman Coy is making a um, motion here that we table this. I'll second that. It has been seconded. I, I would like to see, though, I'd like to have John discuss it with uh, North Hughes and just see, you know, if you haven't had any conversation, see how many uh, Mr. North Hughes did and maybe get us, like you said, some kind of chronological order. Let's see how many discussions you had and and so we have a little more information before we do vote on this. Okay. All right. Because I, I feel if Mr. Spots made the effort before the deadline, at least we are in conversation, but if I'm sorry that if your contact was after that deadline, I'm afraid we're going to probably have to follow. But that's just, uh, but we'll, at least we'll have the discussion and, and follow through with it. Mayor, Mayor, can I ask, can I ask John a question? Just so I'm clear, John, um, how, how did you come to know about this property and its condition? It, uh, it came in uh, as a citizen complaint. Uh, it was an anonymous complaint that came through the office. Uh, those come in sometimes uh, with uh, the ability. I have a, we have caller ID on this particular complaint, but I do not know the name, and I have not called back the individual that made the complaint with it. But it was a citizen complaint. That's fairly routine for your in your experience. Very much. Um, have, is this the first time you've ever engaged in this property, John? Do you know off the top of your head? Without having the file here, I know that uh, certainly we had a condemnation action on the property. Um, we have had previous contacts, uh, contacts in previous years with Mr. Spots reference the need for mowing on the property. Um, that's what I. That's what I was wondering if you've had any previous need on the property. Yeah. We just, I just submit to the elected officials, it becomes, for, from a staff perspective, and trying to manage complaints across our community that are especially similar to, to weeds and litter, it really becomes a matter of chasing your tail once in a while. And John's at the, at the brunt of that, really, um, as being, being uh, the gentleman that does most of that enforcement for us. But um, when those complaints come back to us, to staff, they're real complaints. And I can tell you in my 21 years of working with Mr. Koba, the man is like Job as far as his patience with um, the citizens and trying to bring resolution to, to uh, a process that is never pleasant for anyone, typically. I mean, the property owner or the or city staff. And uh, John always is almost to a fault and uh, of, of patient. Um, so... There's a whole another balance there for us and for staff, you know, and we have these kind of actions and we have a complaint that's driving that and we take the action and then you spin in the amount of uh, professionalism and uh, patience that I know that uh, John Koba submits to that um, process. Um, we have to be accountable for all of those things. So I just want to keep in mind, the like elected officials that keep that in mind for us as we go forward, it makes it, it, makes it tougher for us um, when we don't have clear resolution to these kind of things after we've been all the way deep into that process. So, I mean, not that the table in action is, is um, in question or anything. I just want to bring that information out because it's important to the citizen that's out there probably watching these proceedings go forward and knowing that their, their complaint was being heard and managed appropriately by city staff. And I, it, I just want to remind the elected officials that staff has a a tall order and trying to keep that balance in check. Okay. Point well made. I guess I'd like to ask Mr. Koba a question also. And, uh, <coughs> that is, prior to this evening, have you ever had any claim for the reduction of the cost of this mowing or any information reference to uh, Barry Patch? This is the first I've heard of any uh, any. Uh, materials on that property that were at issue uh, it was authorized to be mowed and uh, there was uh, no mention from regarding any uh, claims and or such related to that uh, first I've heard of raspberries on that lot thank you okay so currently the motion on the floor would be to table with a second I would ask that you please vote Voting in favor of tabling, Coy, Merrill, Clausen, Murin, Faust, Saunders. Voting against it, Brenneman, 
And Lange, motion to table carries. Okay. All right, we'll move on then to consideration of adoption of resolution number 2011-42, levying a special assessment in the amount of $276.10 against property located at 1003 South 2nd Street. For so move, Your Honor. Second. All right, a motion with a second. Any discussion? Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2011-42 is adopted. All right, next is a public hearing at the request of Richard Brum for a zone change from single-family residential district to a local business district at 10,001 South Victory Road. I will open this public hearing and look to you, Scott, to maybe bring us up to date here. Mayor and Council, this request came before us, uh, and what you're all familiar with is perhaps the old monastery school. Uh, Mr. Brum came forward with his desire uh, to potentially relocate his business to that location. We discussed all the potential zoning options that would uh, allow for that use. Um, encouraged Mr. Braun early on in the process to go out and talk to the neighborhood and get a feel for them, have him explain to them firsthand what his intentions were and what he wanted to do there. Uh, it's my understanding from him and that was reported to the Planning Commission that that was exactly what he did. And I'm, I think he's here tonight. He can certainly speak to those efforts to communicate with his neighbors. Um, the choice was made to go to C1. It's important for the council to know that anytime we have a, a, a blending of, of uh, commercial and residential zoning in close proximity, there are always questions that arise about that and what's the best way to manage all of that. Um, certainly it's important to understand that all of the potential uses in C1 are on the table here. If his business were to, to leave, all the other myriad of uses that are allowed in C1 would be allowed there should the zoning change be made. I think you're all aware of that. But it should be duly noted that the comprehensive future land use plan shows that that land area should, is commercial, so it has been forecast for that potential use. So all those things were talked about and laid on the table in the course of the, of the conversation and the process. It's my understanding from Mr. Braun, again, he can speak to that, uh, that the real issues that he heard from the neighbors were more related to, is this mean I'm going to have to hook onto city sewer and those type of questions. And uh, for the council's benefit, there's nothing about this pending zoning action that forwards or diminishes the desire for anybody else that lives in that neighborhood to have to put in or to hook onto city sewer. There's nothing about this specific action that moves that, advances that cause in any way. And so that concern is, uh, although it was raised, is not really connected to this particular process. So, so that's the, the request that's come forward. There, were, there was no uh, testimony at the Planning Commission about this. I've not received any calls uh, in a negative connotation about this over the duration of the, of the notice process. So. Um, I think Mr. Braun will be able to speak to any specific questions you might have about his plans at that location, but that kind of gets us from where we started to where we are today. I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you. Okay, this is a public hearing. Mr. Braun, if you want to come forward and speak to, give us some information, that'd be great. We'll ask you to state your name for us and sign in. <clears throat> Richard Braun, uh, Norfolk, 112 Suburban Drive. As, uh, as Scott said, um, I'm here seeking a zoning change from R1 to C1. I have spoken to uh, several of the uh, adjoining, uh, owners of the adjoining property, uh, and they're pretty much in favor of it. I, matter of fact, they were uh, really happy that we were doing something with the Montessori School. The business that I plan moving in there is a family-oriented uh, recreational uh, sales and service. Um, it's nothing that would uh, create any real big problem as far as commercial. Um, I guess i leave it open for discussion for anybody with any questions. Okay. Council, while we have him here, does anyone have any direct questions for Mr. Braun? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else then in the audience that wants to come forward and speak? Please, we'd like you to state your name and sign I'm in. I'm Marty Pfluger. I reside at 1100 East Bluff. And uh, uh, now, Mr. Braun probably didn't catch me, you know, kind of hit and miss at our house. But uh, 
Um, I just was curious about uh, if he could share with us just what his uh, plans were for for the uh, property. I'm I'm not opposed to his business going in there. I think it's it's good that the property is being used for something you know positive. Sure. And uh, I guess um, you know just if if he could share with us what his long term plans are for it. Mr. Brownie is directing that to you. Do you want to come forward and maybe speak to it a bit? Oh, and I just wanted to add that I, uh, my concern, my first concern was about the city water and sewer, and that's why I was here. But you've laid my my concerns to rest with that. But but like I said, I would like to know just uh, what what he was going to okay. intend. Okay. All right. Thank you, Marty. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, what we really plan on doing it it's a it's a family sales and service business uh, we handle hot tubs swimming pools uh, pool tables anything in family recreation okay uh, so what we plan on doing uh, and uh, it'll take us a little longer than than we would like but we want to open up into a full-fledged store uh, in the beginning it will be uh, service center mostly um, we need a place to get in to inside to work on hot tubs and so forth. Right now, we go out into the cold and try to work on it in people's backyards, and it's kind of hard to do. It's, it uh, just makes more sense to be able to pick them up, bring them in, repair them, and take them back out. Um, so I guess as far as uh, uh, any problems that it would create would uh, of inconvenience uh, would be a little traffic, but way less than what the school had. Um, yeah. So I don't, uh, I don't foresee any real heavy traffic. I hope it is, but <laughs> I don't think <laughs> there will be. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically a simple service of, of uh, sales of, of family recreational merchandise. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. And what are you going to use for your water and sewer? Well, I understand I have two two wells and a fairly new septic tank system so that should supply us for a long time because there's not that much use of either one the water that we use uh, is very minimal uh, matter of fact the most water that we do use goes from uh, one hot tub into another to check them so we, we very seldom dump it don't believe in that kind of waste um, and don't need that kind of waste so the water system that we have out there is more than sufficient for a long time to come Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Braun. You bet. Still an open meeting. Anyone else that wants to come forward and speak? My name is uh, Ron Hilkeman, and I'm a property owner in that area. Uh, five years ago, when uh, they was going to commercialize that out there to put that truck stop in, why? Uh, they was going to assess us set with this water and sewer to the point that we was going to have to leave town. And that's what I'm wondering, that how much of this is going to be commercialized and what how is this going to affect us in the future? Whether we're going to have to leave town eventually or whether uh, if there's going to be another business that comes in that doesn't have their own water and sewer, will they be able to put their own in? or Because uh, at other time they was going to assess the uh, water and sewer in front of us I, if I remember correctly, they were going to assess us at thirty-five thousand dollars to do just put the water in front of us, and uh, that wasn't even to tap into it. And I thought that was kind of ridiculous. And when we heard about this, this was a little bit of a concern of uh, our, how long are we going to be able to stay there as a, as a property owner? Because I know at that time, all the property owners there were very much against that because it because the time they uh, they said that. If you tapped into the water, uh, into the house, a lot of them aren't even city hookup or adapted to that. And then if we had the sewer, then we had to remove the uh, septic tanks, and it was going to be what somewhere between seventy-five and a hundred thousand dollars. And well, when you got a hundred thousand dollar house, there's only one thing you can do is leave. So that's that was my concern: is what it would be, uh, what our future would be to stay in there. Can you, Dennis. Dennis, you want to address the concern for him? 
Um, at this point in time, you know, the city isn't looking at any <clears throat> sewer water assessment districts in that area at all. Um, those cost cities quote and seem a little bit high to me at this point in time, but I don't have uh, uh, recollection of what those costs were this evening. Um, the development that would be south and east of uh, the Montessori school there will be, I guess if and when it occurs, will be done with a project that would involve sewer and water for that particular property so that it would be closer to, to these folks uh, in the future. But um, there's no plans that we're driving toward that at this particular time. I'm not sure that's exactly what you want to hear, but you know I, I understand your concern, and, and I think that's certainly valid. But again, it comes back to the future, and what might be there is kind of an unknown for us. So I appreciate your being here tonight. And again, like I say, I wish we had a magic answer for you. But again, you know, development and opportunity is certainly what we're always looking for. But as um, Dennis has said, there's certainly nothing that foreseeably will create any kind of a, an issue for you in, in the near future. Anyone else is we're still under a um, open public hearing here. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Uh, Dennis Houston with the uh, North Fork Area Chamber of Commerce. I just wanted to say uh, a couple words. I spoke with uh, with Mike Braun earlier today and, and congratulated him on on uh, expanding their business. I think it's a it's a great opportunity as we as we talk about jobs, as we talk about trying to keep uh, people and businesses in our community and grow that. I think it's it's always exciting when you have uh, uh, a group of uh, entrepreneurs, especially a, a family business that's organic and homegrown, is looking to expand. So uh, for that, I uh, on behalf of the chamber and all of our members, I congratulate them for that and and respectfully request that. Uh, as a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that you guys would consider approval of the zoning change to help uh, help their business grow. Thank you. Okay, thanks for being here, Dennis. Anyone else? Okay, with that, then I will close the public hearing and uh, look for consideration of Ordinance Number Five One Eight One, rezoning Ten Thousand One South Victory Road from single family residential to a local business district at the request of Mr. Richard Braun. Your Honor, I would introduce ordinance number 5181. On first second. Reading. A motion with a second. If no further discussion. Oh, pardon me. Yes, please do. The Norfolk Planning Commission held a public hearing on September 7, 2011 for a zone change from R1 single family residential to C1 local commercial at 1001 South Victory Road at the request of Richard Braun. Mr. Braun owns Tropical Waters and wishes to move his business to that location, the former Montessori School. The area provides for easier access of inventory delivery and customers seek out the business so this location's access isn't a problem for visibility. The neighbors that were contacted have no opposition to the change. The Planning Commission voted 5 to 1 to recommend approval of the change. Okay, and with that, you have a short title for me too. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Madison County, Nebraska, amending the zoning district map of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, providing when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect, and providing for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Okay, if you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative, ordinance 5181 carries on first reading. Your Honor, I move that we suspend the rules and pass Ordinance 5181 on second and third. Second. second. We have a motion with a second to suspend and pass on the second and third. Any other discussion at all? If not, please vote. All councilmen voting in the affirmative. Ordinance 5181 carries on second and third. Okay, next is a public hearing to consider a budget amendment to Community Development Block Grant 10-CR-007 to reallocate $30,000 from commercial rehab to street for infrastructure improvements. I'm looking at Mr. Tom Higginbotham to come forward. and Tom Higginbotham, uh, Executive Director, Northeast Nebraska Economic Development District. Uh, we are the grant administrator for this grant. Uh, 
I think the uh, public hearing notice is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the city staff uh, contacted us a while back, you know, wanting to know if we could use some of these facade improvements, commercial rehab and, uh, monies to do some of these other other things listed in the uh, public hearing uh, a month's uh, discussion with the state of Nebraska. Those are eligible activities, but under a different category. So we can do these things, and uh, uh, since these are federal dollars, we need to have the uh, required public hearing to move the dollars from one category to the other. And uh, I'll, if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Okay, appreciate that, Tom. Any questions at all for Tom? It's a public hearing. Anyone else that might have questions or wants to address the um, issue here? Okay, seeing or hearing none, then I will close the public hearing and request a motion to approve for the mayor's signing and forwarding documents to Nebraska Department of Economic Development regarding the budget amendment as requested. So move, Your Honor. Second. Okay. Motion has been uh, made and seconded for approval. If no further discussion, I would ask that you please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative motion carries. Okay, and finally on the agenda is consideration of approval of Ordinance 5182, amending Section 24-164 of the City Code to prohibit parking on the south side of a portion of the 1900 block of West Park Avenue. Chief, you want to address this for us? We're looking at... Um, I'd, I'd moved in. Introduce Ordinance Number 5182 on first reading. Second. Okay. Now we'll look to you. I'm kind of rushing things along here, too. My fault. This is, a, <clears throat> this is basically a, a housekeeping ordinance. The last city council meeting we had, we passed the ordinance to prohibit parking. The intent was to prohibit it on the north side of the street. Uh, somewhere in, in the process of getting that done, uh, it inadvertently was to take parking off of both sides of the street. So tonight, uh, this ordinance comes back to you to just do it on the one side of the street as, as it was originally intended. Okay. I would have a question for the elected officials. Uh, since we've had this this two weeks, have you received any negative comments at all about the action that was taken? Good, good. We had not either. That's that's good. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate the explanation there. Thanks. Any other comments, discussion? Then can I look to a short title? An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, to amend Section 24-164 of the Official City Code to prohibit parking on the south side only of a portion of the 1900 block of West Park Avenue to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. All right. With that, if you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative ordinance. 5182 carries on first reading. Your Honor, I make the motion when we uh, suspend. <laughs> I'm with you, Dave. It's kind of bad. I don't know what it is. <laughs> we have a motion, motion with a second to suspend on second and third. If no further discussion, please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative ordinance 5182 carries on second and third. Okay. And tonight we have a public comment period. If there's anyone in the audience that wants to come forward and share some thoughts or ideas or concerns that you may have now is your opportunity there is no action that can be taken tonight but certainly you have the privilege if so desired I just have a question about uh, I'm not really aware of who my board council is and I was going to try to find that out at 1202 West Prospect 1202 West Prospect yes. nope. no, 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 that's all. nope that's board uh, third ward ends on the south side of Prospect Avenue, so it's on the north side of Prospect Avenue. 1202 is the east side of third. Well, I tell you what, we'll get you an answer unless, here. Yeah. Uh, unless they, east we did change that little redistricting going on. Well, sure, mm -hmm. take a look at it. It could very well be me. Look at it. I tell you what, Mr. Spots, Beth, the city clerk will let you know tomorrow if you um, want to share with her how she can get a hold of you after the meeting. Okay, and because, as is explained, with the census change, I'm not quite sure where you're falling, so we want to be sure. Okay, all right. Anyone else that has any comments they wish to give? If not, a motion to adjourn. 
The loop? I'll make the motion, Your Honor. <laughs> Beat you. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Sorry, I can't start.